Hi, welcome back to Test Sciences series of Reliability Growth Modeling Modules. Recall that in the last module, we covered some basics of the homogeneous Poisson process. In this module, we will go into detail about how to generalize the Poisson process to handle the situation when the time between failures is hopefully increasing. One way to start learning about the non-homogeneous case is to recall some of the assumptions we covered in the initial Poisson process module. Recall that we said that in order for a counting process to be classified as a Poisson process, we have three assumptions that need to be satisfied, which are listed here. The first two assumptions are that, firstly, there are no failures when we start the clock. And secondly, that the number of events in non-overlapping intervals are independent. This third assumption about stationary increments is something that is relaxed by the non-homogeneous Poisson process. Recall that stationary increments means that the distribution of the number of events in an interval depends only on the length of the time interval. So increments on equally long time intervals are identically distributed. So by removing this last assumption, we're saying that when we utilize the non-homogeneous Poisson process to model events, we no longer assume that the average rate of events is constant. Instead, we say that the average rate of events varies with time. Non-homogeneous Poisson process-based models allows the modeling to capture features like increasing failures with time wear out, so this portion of the bathtub curve, or we could be looking at the early stage of the bathtub curve where our system is not failing at a constant rate. Instead, we see perhaps system improvement. So in this early stage, we are observing system failures, making repairs, and the time between failures is increasing, or likewise, the rate of failures is decreasing. So we are improving the reliability of our system with these repairs. So in the last module, we were talking about the HPP, the homogeneous Poisson process, where we have a constant describing the average time between failures. And we called this MTBF, mean time between failures. And we said that this is equal to the expected value of the exponential distribution, one over lambda. So one over lambda is this constant average time between failures. But for cases where the rate of failure is not constant, we need a more complicated function to understand how many events we expect to see and the time between failures. And this function we use is called the intensity function. The stationary increment assumption made calculating probability simpler since it only depended on the length of the time interval. Now we describe how many events we expect to see as changing with time. Hence, we denote the intensity function as lambda of t, because lambda is changing with t or time. The key takeaway in the NHPP case is that we have a way to mathematically understand the changing rate of failure, which is often useful when we are testing systems with the aim to improve the reliability of the system. Now, another way to perhaps understand the intensity function is to return to the Poisson process visual where we plot cumulative failures. So I've recreated this visual on the right. So on the y-axis, we let n of t be our counting function that keeps track of the cumulative number of failures. And on the x-axis, we have our test time from 0 to t. And we saw that n of t is a step function that jumps every time a failure occurs and it stays level until the next failure occurs. Essentially, if we tested our system a lot of times and formed n of t curves for each test, we could then average all of them and have an estimate of the expected number of cumulative failures by time t for the system. And we call this capital lambda of t. So this capital lambda of t is an estimate of the expected number of cumulative failures by t. And this comes from averaging several n of t curves. Now taking the derivative of this gives the intensity function. So the intensity function is equal to the derivative of this capital lambda of t. 
And when we take the derivative and we get the intensity function, we get a rate of change in the expected number of failures. Sometimes we call this ROCOF. So ROCOF stands for rate of occurrence of failures. Now we haven't even talked about probability as it relates to this intensity function. For those of you who are mathematically inclined, we calculate the probability we see exactly n events in the time interval from zero to t using the intensity function. So the intensity function appears in this probability calculation here and here. Now if lambda of x in this probability calculation just equals lambda, so in other words, it's constant. This is just our old friend, the Poisson distribution with mean lambda times t. So just like we ended the HPP module and the NHPP module by looking at our bathtub curve in these three hypothetical systems. Recall that system two has a constant rate of failure, which we used as an example of the HPP case. When we look at systems one and three, the cumulative number of failures is on the y-axis and the time is on the x-axis. Now, when we look at system one, we see that the time between failures is increasing, especially around this area here. So we see these widening gaps where the time as we increment up is increasing as compared to here. So we saw a very steep slope. Now, when we look at system three, the time between failures is decreasing. So it's failing more often. So we get these very, very close dots. In other words, the time between failures are really, really small and they're actually pretty big over here. Now, systems that exhibit significant curvature in this plot, like systems one and three, are typically modeled using a non-stationary process like NHPP because the time between failures is not constant like it is in system two. Now, understanding the intensity function, especially as it pertains to systems best modeled by NHPP, we're ready to learn about specific reliability growth models. Up next, we will look into power law models.